uh, welcome to the sixth broadcast of Matama on Sunday Live. The news that did not make the news. Today we broadcast from Soweto at the Hector Peterson Memorial uh, Center. We all should know that this around this area in 1976, on the 16th of June, students of Soweto were protesting peacefully against the arrogance of the white monopoly capital of the time of the apartheid regime and they were mowed down. One of the few students who were murdered is Hector Peterson. Of course, we know that there were others who might have been also killed before him. But Hector Peterson has become the symbol of that moment. As part of commemorating the 1976 uprising, we have decided to have this program here today. And we have met some lovely people from Soweto, even some brothers here, greeting me and with the children. There's a lot of activities around us here. Seni Bingelela Nonge, Um Nchama on Sunday Live, Namtlanje Se Soweto, Zopoka Nani, Ukwen Zegi Lege, E Viki Nonge, Peri Lele Lele Dupela, Bese Futi Se Akka Otta Noguti, Elo June 16, 1976, Kase Kase Yi. Oda, before we send the logo, Zopala Nguti Slandele, Indaba, Ze Viki, now, please, those of you who, who are on my Twitter handle, go to Black Opinion to to follow the live stream. Firstly, just a message to all of you, particularly Black, Black First, Land First members and supporters and so on, who follow this program. It is better to watch this program in a group. You will save on data. Of course, we know data must fall. We must insist data must fall. But between then and now, watch this program as a group. You put together some your resources, you buy some airtime data, you are able to watch after we are able also to a debate, discuss amongst yourself the issues that we raise from this. As a member of Black First Land First, it is your duty to make sure you, at your branch level, branch members, you watch this program every Sunday because it is the alternative view to what the white media is giving us. Last week we introduced two concepts I want us to go through again just to remind ourselves. One concept is called accumulation by crisis. What is accumulation by crisis? Basically, it is when they create a crisis or if they take advantage of a crisis to make money. One of the books which are very important that, dis that describe this is by Naomi Klein. It's called The Shock, The Crime. The Rise of Disaster Capitalism. The idea that capitalism uses disaster, uses a crisis to accumulate what I have called accumulation by crisis. I call it ABC, accumulation by crisis. So basically what they do is, if there is, say, a disaster like an earthquake, they come and they say, we are coming to help you. That's what they happened in Haiti. Remember when there was an earthquake in Haiti around 2010? Hillary Clinton and their husband, Bill, they celebrated the earthquake because it was, ah, we're going to make money out of this disaster. We're going to say to these black people, we're coming to help them. Instead of helping them, they made money out of our disaster. Then there's another situation, a South African situation, where they actually deliberately create a crisis so that they can privatize. I have found a very interesting uh, quotation from Naomi Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky is uh, one of the leading American lefty intellectuals and he says that's the standard technique of privatization defund in other words don't put money make things don't work people get angry you hand it over to private capital think about it that's what the hell is happening here whether it is hospitals whether it is ESCO they mess it up and then they say privatize it because people are angry be careful accumulation by crisis is a system that makes sure that capital steals from us under the pretext 
of helping us. That was the one concept. The other concept that we introduced, no, let's, let me just make another example about the ABC, accumulation by crisis. It's like, you ask me to take care of your house, you're going away. I go into your house, I decide to break all the windows and the doors and the fridge, everything. I bend it down and I give you a call and say, my brother, I can sort your house out, but there's a quotation that you must pay. In fact, don't worry, it's all sorted. I have the contractors, your house will be right. So I mess your house up so I can make money out of you. That's what is called accumulation by crisis. Matata arona go dipetlele matata arona a motlakase gompie ne raetse gore motlakase ga o bereke gape go na le sogo teng ke low jedi e dirwe ke ba basweu ka ntla ya gore ba tla go tsaya these state owned entities konke lenking ase zibona yo zikhona mhlanje bantu ba kithi zenzwa ba mhlophe nga masibomo ngoba ba funa ukuthi uhulumeni abanikeze lokuthi ama state owned entities so yes please remember that concept because Many times I'm going to try to explain things to you using this concept of accumulation by crisis. We greet you all. This is a live program, Matama on Sunday. Today we're doing it from Soweto. And we can see everybody is here doing what they need to do. We do what we need to do. But then bring it along. Now, let us go to the healthcare system. You know, last week we mentioned that Aaron Motua Lady is busy destroying the healthcare system. <coughs> It is true, but there is an answer. Black First Land First says, the best answer to the healthcare crisis, to the education crisis, to the transport, the housing crisis that our people suffer is simple. Force public representatives to use public services. From the president to the guy who sweeps. Think about it. If Ramaphosa was to think, if I'm sick, I'm going to a Christian hospital. If David Makura was to say, when I sick, his children are sick, they must go to um, Chris, Chris, Barney, uh, Chris Honey Hospital. That is what Bala is called. They will immediately sort out, even Julius Malema will be worried. If he gets sick, he must go to a public hospital. He will be going crazy wanting the services and the standards of our hospital to go up. So BLF says, Black First Land First says, to solve the public crisis in terms of standard, force them, the president, the members of parliament, MPs, force them to use public services. Look, we elect these people to serve us. They take the money, they go to the private sector, they allow the public sector, they think they get paid to basically give us to collapse because they don't have to go there. You see what we're saying? Black First Land First is a genius movement. It's got very simple answers to very complicated situations. Let's force them by law. One of the things that Black First Land First is going to do when we get to Parliament, we're going to Parliament next year. They're going to vote for us. People who have sense are going to vote for us. Is to put a bill that says, by law, force all MPs, the President, also ministers, DGs, imagine. DGs, all the directors, senior people in government, they must use public services. We can assure you, overnight, our services will be great. Even their schools, schools, think about it. And it's easy, they will try to dodge. No, don't worry, we say to them, you must go to the hospital which is not, which is within 50 mid, 50, say 50 kilometers radius from where you come from. So, if there's a bad hospital in Mangueng, Julius, it's your responsibility because you're, that's where you're going. So these crises, as we say, are not crises which we must worry too much about, they can be sorted out. Now, let us deal with the issue of Project 2019. Last week, Sunday, I introduced another concept, Project 2019. I explained that Project 2019 is what London wants. London wants in South Africa a government of national unity, they say, EFF, DA and ANC of Ramaphosa to make sure that white monopoly capital is taken care of. We want you to monitor this. That's why they are taking the Ngoyama Trust. That's why they are fighting in KwaZulu-Natal. One of the news that not make the news is the fact that the public protector advocate Mkwebani has come out with a very important ruling. Uti advocate Mkwebani. Ngo KLA DA 
Wellenzilla, Bella Ingokele, Wellenzilla, as you know, Fana, my man, my manager, Ukashiway. Ingokele, DA, Inuband Loga Ku, Uhelenzilla. Sia Kumbuli, where I tweet, I watch my favorite Twitter, Tinabanda Banyam, Ukolunia, Lutatra Gumshaba, where to print it on a bum shop, Loka Balegang. Bessie, a Kubanama complaint, if you left Wins in the Loka. Pumila Manjumbigo. Advocate Mkwebani, Uti, U Helen Zile must be held accountable. Mayama Kama, Melek Wenz Rok Tizen, Uti, Akulum Selok. The shocking thing is that the advocate Mkwebani has been attacked by everybody. All the white people, all the journalists, even the professors, because she says Helen Zile must account for racism. BLF supported that uh, conclusion of the public protector. It's a good uh, decision. Helen Zilla is a racist. We don't understand why EFF is still giving her power. She's still the premier. And she's using public money to defend herself. Remember, BLF has got a case against her and she's using public money to defend her. Now, we, um, we must be sure that we protect the public protector. The DA knew this was coming and then they ran to parliament and said the parliament must call uh, the public protector to a kangaroo court so that they can insult her because she had already told them that she's going to find against Helen Zizi. So, whatever is happening in parliament, war advocate, Muslim Kweban, Stalagutinaz Ban Bagiti, it is about revenging the DA. He wants to silence her because she has found against her because she has found against Absa because she said the reserve bank must save us. Now, let's turn to something. This is a call for assistance. SOS call. Please help us locate the offices of Facebook. We have looked everywhere. We can't find the office of Facebook in South Africa. Facebook has banned me again for another 30 days. For no reason whatsoever. And we're trying to find out where they are because we want to visit them, want to have coffee with them. It's funny to Facebook is no ma by pair to Bashala Whoopi, so Bafagasha Latin and see like first land first. No Balago Balanza, Facebook, Aglumi, Bashal and Jalabes Kuipa Facebook. This time around, they've banned me for this reason. They say that I have published the black code of BLF, the black code on house niggers and sellouts. The black code on house niggers and sellouts. I want to read this to you so that you know why Facebook has banned me for another 30 days. You know, white people are evil actually, when you think about it. Because this is what about, they don't want us united, they don't want us clear. This black code on house niggas and sellouts, it's about black people, it's about us working together. I'm gonna read quickly 10 short points. Point number one The enemy of black liberation is white supremacy, manifest as settler colonialism and white monopoly capital. Number one, remember that enemy. Two, White supremacy benefits all white people and oppresses all black people. Three, defend without question any black person who comes under attack from the enemy. Four, and I think this is important, remember always, house niggers and sellouts are black in the eyes of the enemy. Even house niggers are black when they look at them, the enemy, right? Five, all black actions must be guided by one consideration. Is, is this in aid of black liberation? Whatever you do must be aided, guided by that idea. Is this, is this for black liberation? Number six, all actions must be focused on the enemy. Remember the enemy, white monopoly capital, white supremacy. Number seven, never go into collaboration with the enemy against any black person, including house niggers. I'm gonna read that again. And this is for EFF comrades. Never go into collaboration with the enemy against any black person, including house niggers. This is a very shocking thing that somebody thinks we're fighting the enemy, white supremacy, white people, land thieves. You go into collaboration with, uh, with black people you call uh, house niggers. You, you say you're going into collaboration with the white people against these so-called collaborators. How is this strategic? How does this help liberation? Where have you seen that? you going into collaboration with the real enemy against black people who are sellouts. You know what you are doing? You're just removing this old sellout 
so that you can become the new sellout. Number eight, sellout and house niggas must be dealt with only by fellow blacks, never in a manner that strengthens the enemy. We deal with your house niggas in a way that does not strengthen the enemy. You can't give the DA political power, strengthening the enemy and saying that you are dealing with the house niggas. Number 10, never forget who the enemy of black people is and never forgive this enemy. That's what Facebook's, Facebook uh, banned us for, simply trying to unite black people so that we can fight for our liberation. Now, white people are threatened by black unity. White people are threatened by black people together. They are even offended by that. That's why they have banned us, or me this time, from Facebook. Now let us, you know all of you that last year in parliament, or early this year in parliament, there was the land expropriation motion. Last week Friday, it was the deadline for submissions to the parliamentary portfolio committee for the written submissions and also to when you request to come and make an oral representation in parliament. Please, that has now been closed. But they still come into the provinces and to the regions. Please go to the uh, uh, parliamentary uh, committee. It's called the Constitutional Review Committee. They will give you the, the program where they're going to be. And also in all the Black First, Land First platforms, including my Facebook, we are going to put up this program. You must go to those hearings when they come to you. Black First, Land First has submitted our own uh, written submission. We have asked to go and also address Parliament. But the shocking thing is this. The Parliament says they have received over 700,000 submissions. Now that's a lie. Parliament is giving legitimacy to Afri Forum's duplication because Afri Forum has been sending the same message over and over again to Parliament saying that they don't want land expropriation without compensation. No, there are no 700, uh, submi 700,000 submissions. Probably it's about 100 serious real submissions. Black First Land First is calling on Parliament of South Africa not to sell us out. Already we know this motion about land expropriation without compensation is a motion to delay precisely land being given to black people. We already know Julius Malema and Sir Ramaphosa are saying black people must only get unused land, vacant land, unproductive land. So even if this thing was to, to be uh, realized, it will be about land which white people don't want. So we know on the process point of view also, there is not going to be any expropriation of land uh, without compensation amendment of the constitution before the elections. We are making this point again and again. They're just playing political football so that they can get your votes. So what you must do when you get to those hearings? You must say, you must raise your hand and ask to, be, to speak. And then you must ask them. Are you telling me that, are you telling us that there is not going to be amendment of the constitution before the next elections. If that is the case, no land, no vote for you, Julius Malema, and you, Sarah Maposa, because both of you went to parliament and you said you agree now there's going to be amendment of the constitution to make land expropriation possible. That is the first question that we must raise. The second question we must raise when you go there is to ask them, when the ANC and EFF says we must occupy unused land, we must occupy unproductive land. We must occupy vacant land. Who must take the productive land? Is it white people? And is this what this commission is going to write in its recommendations? And finally, I think a very important question that must be said is to say to the commission, the commission must instruct parliament that already there is a bill before the uh, uh, one of the committees Public Works Committee, and that bill is about land expropriation. All that must happen is that that committee must simply amend the existing bill. It must say, we are not going to pay a cent 
for taking back our land. And this must happen now. It must not happen after elections because after elections they want to forget about this story. In the BLF submissions, we've raised these issues. We've made big sub, I mean, uh, suggestions. We are also making, we move from the premise that the question that must be answered, whose land is this? They must answer that question. Whose land is this? Because once they answer that question, the land belongs to black people, then we have no debate about somebody must pay money. And also, people like Nukai Tobi must, must stop lying. I think I'm going to say this. Advocate Nukai Tobi is lying. Professor Ruth Hall is lying. In the PLF submission, we make examples of four instances where the question of now let's use the offensive expression just an equitable compensation that simply means you must buy back the land stolen from you the constitution says each time this current constitution of Ruth Mayer says each time we take land we must pay a just and equitable compensation you know every time that has happened four times already our courts have said we must pay market value in fact, we are quoting a case which was said, presided over by the same Nukai Tobi, Tembegan Nukai Tobi. Tembegan Nukai Tobi, people don't know this, he is a judge. He sits as an acting judge at the Lane Claims Court. He himself, a matter came before him. He said, okay, you take away 300,000, we must still pay the white people who stole our land 3.5 million. As we speak today, that decision has been overturned by the Supreme Court of Appeal last september why are they not telling the truth the law of south africa as it stands in terms of the our court every time you expropriate you must pay market value to the land thief so let them come out and tell the truth this constitution must be amended but the politicians and we see now their supporters are making sure that there's not going to be any amendment of this constitution so again let me remind you please go out Look out for the Constitutional Review Committee and make those submissions. I, 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 my, my director is telling me that I don't have a lot of time because I must talk about June 16. Let's talk about something interesting. Why is Julius Malema attacking the Indians? Eh, who Julius was a salamandi? As far as no one can go, no one can go. I carry. Sixteen <laughs> Uku kusela abam shope ibe ibona abatatu izola giti footi ibona abapeto muno tu agiti abam shope manje batumela abantu manje ngo botulias uku tiba shase la mandi uku zesinga aikula abam shope ibe ibona inki na gasese izitazi asu kapele log ban bagiti asu vumi na chukudu abantu abatata zoe amandi na mandi amele swache le uku tiba ba laisa tafrika nga panzwe tu mele ba shoni. Mele is into zonge zambi nguti umdo mnyama uye na pambi. Koto manje ukuze abam shope basi ba vige linda ba kuti sesia kubo ona manje. Basebe nzi saa ukti nisitaba nesoto. Mangenzu mzegelo ngobangia kwa nguti akukali loko. Kwa loko kata sikichi misama kupta. Akichinyu misama kupta apuma. Abo yohan rupet ba shezi kama nani South Africa. Ngomishaba wetu nezo ilagiti. Sapege loko. Wata hai. Asingene ni masisincha makama manje oma. Uh, our my airport. I'm an airport up owned by white people. Ushinji Kamala Airport will lose Winnie Mandela, go to Nigas while the airport will lose. We are one of ones on Galang at Nalapo food. Who is singing at Kalsing Aikuti? See, as if only airport, man, but Sifuni is well to long. Okay, South Africa, Sifuni Yoni, Sifuna fish, Sifuna my airport, Sifuni Tab, Sifuni Shasha, Sifuna Kong, or where to Kong a log. I'm 
Mouse were to a black first land, see ya nini, a balungini, Jang and Ganes got seventy six, go by that young or good about short. Manjak's Jalang Artiman, she cut, she cut, and she saw to a lap. No, but massing up, massing up a pale one baggage, Margaret or Kuru and Amandi. So come from the Macalat, man, to two to Lassana Macalat. In Ganset Pella Macalat. My good one of forty is does it. Maxuka lap, got them cross, you don't know. So I want to call them. Besides a cabana sort, I'm shopping about Banji. But Petty is related to Futibona. But who are continuing to fuel the black on black violence? Mela Sibu's EFF. When have EFF ever taken white person to court? Umdum Umdumunji. When has EFF called the white man there in, in parliament to arrest them? <coughs> they always harassing black people. Now we must fight. Now, a very interesting thing about this one. You see, we are going to be able to get the money. We are going to be able to get the money. We are going to be able to get the money. We are going to be the money. We are going to be able to get the money. We are to be able to get the money. We are the problem. Use it. personal corruption to make us have a black and black violence against everybody. Now that uh, Momo is called this guy, the deputy DG. He has challenged Floyd Chivambu to a personal lifestyle audit. He says, okay, you say I'm corrupt, let's have a lifestyle audit. Let's see, why are you driving a Porsche? Do you have the money to, to pay for a Porsche? Where do you live? What is your lifestyle? We take your salary against your expenditure. Let's see who is corrupt. Floyd Chivambu has run away and he's now insulting from the touch lines. Umuomo has made a challenge to you, Baba. You say he's corrupt, he says you're corrupt. Tina Singen, Tina Singen, Tina Singen, Tina Singen, Go and have a lifestyle audit with that man and let us see who is real corrupt. Si katele, ukhlala ngati, ukhlala ngati ganji, alabante banga funi silio na bam shope, kota besebe nzisa irradical rhetoric, kanti bakusela noma bafigela abam shope. The thing about the black, or the Indian attitude, we must also just deal with it quickly. Indians, because we don't have our land, because we are made to beg for jobs, we end up going to beg for jobs from them, and they look down on us. But that is also true with Abandama Nyama, who are also uh, employing so-called domestic workers. Jaluobuza njabu maabu mama beli tukuti, uu mwabakashu Abandama Nyama bafana naati. Beba seben zelemi zinyabu. Ngaba, how is the treatment? Half the time they don't get paid, we know this. Half the time they get paid late, we know that they are not being respected. The same way those few black farmers, African farmers, the way they treat their black farm workers is really bad. Why? Again, if you don't understand the system, you'll think that these people are really bad. They are worse than the bure. That's not true. If you are a black farmer, you have no subsidy. You never get subsidies from the apartheid government. You, your income is not regular. You are squeezed by the whole white system. To try to make money, you end up super exploiting those that work for you. But it's because it's a white system that is pressuring you to do the things that end up being so harmful to your people. We need to destroy the white bigger system that make us enemies of each other. Just like our black, I'm a black uh, so-called uh, madams. Indians are running away from being black, but all of us, of course, are running away from being black. And this is because we have nothing, our country is in the hands of white people. Let us take the country black and we'll back and we'll have our dignity back. <coughs> there is no landless person who will ever enjoy dignity. It's impossible. A landless person is treated like a landless person. And that's how we are treated in this country. The enemy, again, is those who have our land. We must not allow agents of white monopoly capital to make us fight amongst ourselves. Now, also, you know, there's the whole issue of blacks, can, blacks can't be racist. Kefune wutu chulias ngempela ngempela afu ndi black consciousness. Agwa zu ifundi. Uguze, agwa zu wuti. Isi ta ubani. Imba uban tululo yini. Also to make a distinction between, I don't have time to do this now, but it's important, there is a distinction between racism and tribalism. Racism is a system of white people against us black people. Tribalism sometimes is a prejudicial, I mean, uh, behaviors that we might have amongst ourselves. 
say Cosa against Zulu, Zulu against Cosa, Cosa against Spady, and so on. That's called tribalism. It is not racism. In the same way, our secondary contradictions with the Kalats and the Indians, that's not racism. That is, again, tribalism. Because quite frankly, the so-called Kalats and the Indians must be treated and recognized as just another tribe. That's what it is. And the apartheid system has created that hierarchy. Singapore, Shaban Bagit, the hierarchy was created by apartheid by Abelung. Babega Belung Pambili, Abega Mandi Amvagabo, Babega Makalat, Besit Nabas Begit the name. But once a Begonza Lani Loko, Ukuza Tina, the Indian Kalat and Africans must fight amongst ourselves. It is a system of divide and rule. But lots of Indians and Kalat people, they are working class poor people, which have been made to hate other poor African people and vice versa. Steve Biko teaches us, unite the oppressed. Unite the oppressed. Do not allow the enemy to divide us. That's what is important. Any revolutionary movement must teach its people what divide us so that we can unite our people. We don't mobilize the most backward sentiments amongst our people to divide our people further. What is next? Nigerians are the enemy. What is next? We must not do that. We are revolutionary movements. We must help our people see what is the invisible hand that divides our people and make us fight. So, let first, let first keep on saying this. Let us make sure we unite our people. Now, let's deal with June 16. We don't have a lot of time, but I want us to deal with June 16. There's been lots of mis misunderstanding, misinformation. You know? Firstly, let's start here. Put a map pause, I on a Lysol. Orlando. He was addressing empty chairs there. <laughs> Ramaphosa was seen Orlando addressing empty chairs. The only real charmer here, the real magnet, is Jacob Zoom. Ramaphosa must stop playing games. He is a man of boardroom secrets with the Oppenheimers. He, our people don't care who he is. Our people don't even want to hear what he's going to say. And the unfortunate part is Uramaposa has no message for black people. Uramaposa Uramaposa agana luto anga chela anga chela kona team. Usbangela njinki inga. Load shedding is back. Nizui lelo saibo anat. Ngobe kosha u Brian Mulefe. Brian Mulefe was one and remains one of the most important black managers. But because white people don't want transformation, they use Uramaposa to get rid of him. That is why today we have. I hope ke. Load shading and the soccer world cup can unite and make an explosion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, a lot of people want to watch their soccer man. I, I, I'm not I'm like I, I'm not involved in this soccer thing, right? Because I know they're gonna rob black teams, they always do. But those of you who really love your soccer, Ronaldo, you are going on Ronaldino and Messi and so on. When load shading hits, you get very angry. Maybe they must just hit you on the most important games and then you must go out in the streets and you must demand free electricity, demand the land back, demand real transformation. And that is why it's so important that you must recognize NUMSA and NUM. The United on the Strike around the salaries at ESCOM is very important. Unity in action. We recognize that. Let's do that. Unity in action. But let us see maybe who knows? The World Cup might still make us make a revolution because we love the soccer that much. No, soccer is all right. But just make sure that it doesn't take you away from some serious stuff happening in this country. I'll just tell you, some, one of the things that is happening right now with the soccer is making you not realize Guadalajara Mantash. Guadalajara Mantash. You know Guadalajara Mantash has got a very bad sense of design. Guadalajara, a very bad sense. You remember this? <laughs> Guayra has no sense of design, of proportion, of color, uh, of just occasion, basically. Mm. <laughs> so, Guayra Montage has announced a new mining charter. That mining charter looks like this. <laughs> That's what it is. Guayra Montage's mining charter looks like Guayra's best suit. Yeah, it's a suit to It's a beautiful one. So, this mining charter basically is oversized. 
It gives white people again everything. It takes everything that the Seventh Zwane Charter gave us. What did the Seventh Zwane Charter gave us? It says, in 12 months, 30 percent of the mining uh, rights must be in black hands. 12 months. Where the Mantar says no. Only in five years shall we get the 30 percent. Zwane said. Give black people immediately 1% of the total turnover <coughs> annually. That means it's money in your pocket. Gwede says, no, it's not talking about turnover, it's talking about the profit. And you know why we said turnover? It's because you can't hide turnover in your balance sheet, but you can hide profits. Gwede says, profit, 1% profit also in five years. You know um, what Mr. Zwane said? said 70 percent procurement bee in other words must come from us gone that is also gone you know um zwane said we need more than 50 percent representation high representation of women all that gone basically what guade mantasha is saying is that to white people once Empowered, always empowered. What does that mean? It means a company can say today we have a BE uh, compliance, and tomorrow they say black people must sell all those shares. Where the Mantar says once empowered, always empowered, says that's fine, good right, okay. So we have a problem in this country. Where the Mantar undertaking the project or the agenda of white monopoly capital has destroyed the mining charter of Zwani, and you know, for us. The shocking thing as BLF is that there's total silence on Amazamazam. We have said Zamazamas are the rightful owners of South African economy and the mine. It's gone. It's no longer there. It's not there. And we remember, Gwede calls Amazamazama Ama criminals. Now let us go back to June 16 and the distortions. It's a lot of distortions. June 16, 1976. It's a day which was organized, which was inspired by the Black Consciousness Movement of Steve Biko. In South Africa, we must know, there are three main liberation movements of the last century, if you like. It is the ANC, the oldest. It is the PAC, which is a breakaway in the, in the late 50s. And it's Black Consciousness of Steve Biko. ANC gave us a Freedom Charter. And I'm just making this point without making a value judgment in the Freedom Charter, right? That is their contribution. Done. Nobody can go and say, if you don't chat a boy, ANC. Sharpville massacre, the events leading to the Sharpville massacre were organized by the PAC. We all must recognize this and we must acknowledge the PAC. Done. 1976, Soweto Uprising, it is an event organized by Black Consciousness. Let us all respect that. If Black Consciousness movement got Steve Bigo. Now, one of the key players is Abram Tiro. That's, that's Abram Tiro. Unkhopote Tiro. He was a big friend of Steve Bigo. He was in 1972 expelled from University Teflo because of his activities supporting black consciousness and his revolutionary organization. Unkhopote Tiro came to Soweto after he was expelled from Turf. He worked here and one of his students is Tieti Mashinini. Tieti Mashinini is the leader of the 1976 uprising. So that's the important thing. Abraham Tiro, Black Consciousness, come to Soweto, organize students, organizes South African student movement, which is the uh, high school student movement of Black Consciousness. And one of his leaders in Soweto is, is, is Tieti Mashinini, a bright young man. There is again no dispute. Tieti Mashinini is the leader of the 1976 uprising. Tieti Mashinini had a very close friend who took over after him, Koto Shashulu. That is Tieti, that's Koto. Koto Shashulu. Now, Koto Shashulu took over from Tieti and he continued when Tieti was forced to go to exile. I am fortunate to say, when Khoto Siafula went to, when came out of prison, I stayed with him in Zola, here in Soweto, when I was going uh, to my matric high school. I was, in many ways, 
mentored by Khoto Siathlon. Now Khoto Siathlon and TAT were very young at the time. Let's just go back to when they led the movement. TAT forced out of the country, Khoto Siathlon takes over, but also he was forced into exile. Khoto Siathlon trained in military training. Both of them did not join the ANC. They did not join the ANPAC. I must repeat that. Khoto Siathlon, TAT Machinini did not join the ANC, not join the PAC because they belong, they belong to Black Consciousness Movement. But there's something that Khoto told me. Khoto Siathilo told me when they left the country, in last meeting with Umama Winnie Madikizela Mandela, Winnie said to him, you go to exile, my son. Go and train, be a soldier. Do not join the ANC. Because those old men in exile are tired and they're not willing to come back and fight. Winnie Mandela said, do not stay in exile. Go, train, organize an army, come back and fight. True, in 1980, Tietimach, I mean, Khoto came back to the country when he was captured. It is an amazing story, a story which can be vouched for by people like um, Mr. Mazwai, the father of the famous the Mazwais. He went to jail because he was assisting Khoto Siakulo. He was a newspaper man. It was a dramatic situation, what they had planned, those young people back then. Khoto Siakulo, wanted by the apartheid government, goes outside, trains. When Zimbabwe was about to get its own independence in 1980, Khoto uh, was advised by Togogara, the Zimbabwean general, that we are going home, we want you, young people from South Africa, to use our bases to bring in an army. We'll train you. Then Khoto Siakulo and the people like Mr. Mazwai and also one of the Sisulus who was in the media at the time and the people like uh, Mam Smongilim Kabela who were in the forefront of course of the 1976. They organized this event. Khoto Siakulo, wanted by the apartheid government, was going to come to South Africa and address at least three meetings. One in Regina Mundi, one in Durban, one in Cape Town, and go back to exile. But these meetings, they wanted them to be on June 16, like it was yesterday. Khoto would have come to a Regina Mundi and he would have spoken for five minutes. All he'll say to the young people, we are ready, come out of South Africa, come to their camps, you will be soldiers, let's make the revolution. And he leaves. And all these young people will in droves go into exile and they will find a military infrastructure. He spoke, he spoke to people like uh, Mr. Mazwai. And Mr. Mazwai, of course, was a newspaper man. Unfortunately, the apartheid regime was listening. And then they arrested Khoto, they arrested these people. I think the admirable thing about the, those who were picked up, like Mr. Mazwai and the Sisulu and, and, and Mam Kabel, is that they refused to testify against Khoto Siathlolo. In fact, they preferred to go to jail. That is how the commitment was back then. And that's how it must be again. Anyway, Khoto Siathlolo then was uh, jailed for 10 years. When he returned from Robben Island, as I say, I was lucky to be one of the young people that was mentored by Khoto Siathlolo. So please, let us, let us be clear. 1976 is, is, a, June, is a black consciousness event inspired by Steve Biko. Because when Steve Biko was asked, what is the contribution of black consciousness? He said, so wait. When they asked him, what do you mean by that? He said, because then, black people had defeated fear. Those young people of Soweto defeated fear. Remember, since the, uh, the turn of the century, banning of the ANC, banning of uh, sending Mandela and them to jail, um, Shabil massacre, killing of people like that, our people were terrified. But again, black consciousness gave them hope, gave them courage, and we saw them on the streets uh, saying black power. And this is what I want to talk about. A lot of people want to say June 16 is not a black consciousness <coughs> event because you have people like Mutupeng, you have Bethal people who went to Bethal trial who are also PAC people who were accused of being the organizers of the June 16 by the apartheid regime. The apartheid regime is not the best measure about who is responsible for what. In fact, Winnie Madigzela Mandela was sent to Branford 
We remember we were sent there out away in an internal displacement because of the June 16. White people said she was responsible for the June 16 measure. But what I like about Winnie and her contribution is that she was influenced by black consciousness. Check that. Check that feast. Check that feast. That is a black power salute. Yeah. ANC doesn't do the black power salute. That's a black power salute of Umama Winnie Matigizela Mandela. Black power salute. So our mama was influenced by black, black power and she influenced it back. And so she was ANC. She was never a BC in that sense or formally organizationally. Just like Mutupeng was PAC and they all were in Sweden, they were all in touch with the student leaders, but they did not organize the June 16th. It belonged to black consciousness. Let's respect that. Now, before we go, I'm, I, I must tell you about the news. That did not make the news. Our newspapers, let's finish them with it. You know, something I want to talk about, we don't have time, is the Zimbabwean elections. But next week, we'll spend some time talking about the Zimbabwean elections. You know, there are three organizations there running. The one guy of the MDC, um, Nelson Ch Ch Chimasa, I think. He's a 40-year-old guy. Regularly, he does press-ups in the middle of Harare just to show the old man that he is young, energetic, and basically virile. No, <coughs> we want ideas. Next week, we'll bring the Zimbabwean elections and we'll break them down. But what, then, what do the newspapers say? You know, you would have thought one of the biggest news which not make the news is the Judge Zondo's commission. You know that judicial commission of inquiry on so-called state capture, it's on. And that commission last week published a call for those who have evidence to come before it. The newspapers are not covering it. Judge Zondo wants evidence of a state capture. We have it. Tina Snayo, Tina C. Ready. Within a week, Sebastian Juan of Jazondo, some niggas are my paper, but the Chinese are with a shop about Chonchan and Anan, who cover the Sakaman shop of Kulu and Ninka, Kulu South Africa, Sinab Fagas of Tuele, footing Java into a state capture, Ayi Kokina Bandabam Yama, Ibona Bam shop by pet, Maja by a trash, by a kitchen of a food keeping the Wuti, Uchazondo Uti, Letan Fagas, Oponsa Uti, in his state capture. So we will have to continuously raise this issue. Judge Zondo does not have a lot of time. So if you have evidence of state capture, you have to make sure you respond. You can Google the Commission of Inquiry, the Judicial Commission of Inquiry and State Capture. Go look at the call for submission for evidence. Black First Land First has said, investigate all corruption from the Guptas to the Ruperts. But they don't want to deal with the Ruperts. And we know the Guptas, there's no evidence because courts have been throwing out their uh, 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 cases. Now we are going to Judge Zondo to give him evidence of state capture. This news of Judge Zondo calling for evidence has been suppressed by white monopoly capital completely. They are terrified. Why is she Ilum Cholo to pay? What Ilum Cholo's do not provoke us. Ilum Cholo's, do you want a judicial commission of inquiry? Because you might just get what you don't want. And it is true now that commission is open. We are going to send information to the commission on the 26 billion rand stolen from the reserve bank we're going to send information around the 20 billion rand which was taken by uh, steinhoff we are going to go on escom and how white monopoly capital has captured it we are going to go to the 1.3 trillion rand which we know it's involved in all kinds of corruption we are going to go to the paradise papers we're going to go to bermuda papers no agent of white monopoly capital is going to be safe and we'll summarize also these matters these big massive corruptions which white capital is involved in and have not been covered by the white media we are happy we celebrate the zondo commission because finally the truth is gonna be out and you will see the guptas play such a small role if any in corruption if any and who are they all corrupt? The friend of Selva Maposa and Julius Malema, Johan Rupert. We're gonna show Maria Ramos. We're gonna show Christo Vese, the, the, the rhino poacher. The white names are going to just cascade. 
Next week, we'll give you a summary of all the matters that BLF is sending to Judge Zondo to look at. Because we want, we want justice. But so, there are papers. The Rupert Paper Sunday Times molefested 19 billion transnet lie. Now, you know what is shocking about this? Molefe has saved us from load shedding. The workers in ESCOM are calling for Molefe to come back. I'm sure it's really long. But it's a boy, Brian Molefe. 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 Brian Molefe. I'm sure people are going to say, Brian, I'm 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 going to say, uh, who Brian Mulefe is involved in some kind of corruption in Transnet. Who can you go look? Among Angela, Ngawa, Abantu, Bayalbona, Ethanis. Also, the PIC. We must talk about the PIC, Public Investment Corporation. This is the thing that has all our money, billions and billions, mm. in fact, trillions mm. of our money is managed by the. Now, our shame, our brother. You know this brother of ours, Omaji, Udenmaji. But then, much like the Gitchiman about to Abati Kunak state capture be against Amakutas. Manje, what capital? This paper, the owners of this paper, they want money from the PIC because they are in trouble. Now, this man doesn't want to give them money, they are going after him. So now, uh, they are calling up, they say he's in a petty mess, they say he's corrupt. They want to remove. O Machila, O Den Machila, who was a Bafagum to Abo, who was a Bagazuk Chonchakasa in Mali, your PIC. One thing they covered, but very low, but also not complete, is this story. DA calls on a price, yeah? UK election, election guru to rescue his image. This man here is Crosby, is Sir Crosby. Mm -hmm. Sir Crosby has been called by the DA to come and do propaganda work for it around the elections. Well. Crosby is a friend of another guy you need to remember, Robin Renwick. We always said the DA is controlled by London. So they went to London to get this man. He's a friend of Renwick. They're going to come here and basically they're going to have a racist campaign, a campaign of lies, because this is what this Sir Crosby is known for. I mean, he does campaigns such as, I mean, imagine racist things such as, I mean, I want to quote uh, here, you know, about immigrants. He said, setting setting limits on the rights of immigration of our immigrants is not racist so this man is a proper racist he is the bell potinger of the da direct from london they don't these people don't get tired right and then a very shocking headline i think from the independent it says land grab explosive and they they go they, I don't know why they keep on going to Baba Endum Lange. Baba Endum Lange is 93 years old. He's a very old man. He must be left in peace. They keep on going and dragging him. Now, uh, Kalima Mutlante, the one who says we must take the land of the king, of uh, the king, of the Ingonyama Trust, called people together and called Baba Umlange. Baba Umlange was there to say, don't take the land of white people because the Bure are not going to allow you to do so. It's going to be bad, you know. So please don't take, I mean, leave Endrum Langen alone. He's an old man, we respect him. We are going to take this land. It is ours. Don't try to blackmail us or whitemail us rather. Using Amantabat Dalapume Robben Island. Instead of letting them relax with their children and grandchildren, you, may, you drag them out like you're doing here. So, what we are saying is, as, as this program is that to respect June 16, we must remember what they fought for. Somebody must give the ANC also to Ramaphosa basic lessons. He was busy yesterday talking about in employment created by uh, industry for young people. These internships, we call them employment. He talks about education when we know he took away free education and a lot of young people are still in jail. If Ramaphosa was serious about June 16, the first thing we have done was to make sure that those young people of FIS must fall who are still in jail, who have been criminalized, are being set free. Imagine if Ramaphosa was to say, all young people in jail, as my commitment to the memory of June 16, you must be released from jail. He didn't say that. We know that he's moving. Even the value 
of free education. But a shocking thing, I don't know if you saw this, I should have printed it out for you. The Ramaphosa event says 1967. Not 1976, 1967. They don't even know when the June 16 uprising happened. So we asked them to stay away from talking about June 16 because they are insulting the memory of those young brave people who stood up against their friends. Because that's what happened. The young people stood up against the friends of Ramaphosa with their bare hands, their determination, their courage, and their lives. I am told it is Father's Day. <laughs> I'm told it is Father's Day. <laughs> Bobaba. The problem, Nani. The problem, Bobaba. Please. We must try. I know it's difficult. But let us try to take care of the children. It's a difficult thing. Let's try to do it. We can't allow the mothers to be the only ones who struggle so much. We know it's tough. We know we're unemployed. We know that, I mean, the system is making sure that you can't take care of your children. But I'm taking responsibility as well as Ubaba. Because often the children that we have, their mothers have to raise them. And we are not there. But I'm told it's your day. I don't know. I tried to Google where this thing comes from. <laughs> Father's Day is an event that started in England. So, you know, I mean, me and England is a problem. But anyway, it's your day, fathers. Kutwa. Ho labo fader. Fandach. El jaledach. <laughs> yeah, Shangama Brain Tutu, Shaya Nangama, Crockett and Jones. I think I'm a Ducks of London as well. Hey, in the Basel London, Banbagiti, I'm meaning at none. Okay, please uh, let us join Motama on Sunday next week, same time. And we say to the young people of 76, Black Power. And we also must thank the loyal, hard-working team of Sunday, of Nutama on Sunday, that over and over again finds a time to come out and run this program. And we also... Uh,